Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, your girl NT, and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be discussing something very near and dear to my heart, religion versus relationship. And of course, you guys know I have a relationship with God and I am being more open about it on this channel. But before we touch on religion versus relationship, I wanted to give you guys a disclaimer. Like I just mentioned, I'm being a lot more open and honest about my relationship with God on my channel because this platform is no longer my main source of my income. Um, believe it or not, that has a huge, huge part uh, as to why my content is shifting and changing. So it goes a little bit like this. When I first started YouTube, I made videos on whatever I wanted for fun. Somewhere along the lines, my videos got popular. When your videos get more popular, you make more money on YouTube. When you make more money on YouTube, you spend that money on things like new house, going out with your friends. It basically changes your lifestyle, right? That's all amazing. However, you have to maintain that level of income on your social media if you're gonna continue to rely on it for your money. And so my YouTube content went from uploading whatever I want for fun to uploading only what is popular and only what the masses really wanted from me, which was things like zodiac signs, tea videos, drama. And I had to keep making that kind of content if I wanted to maintain the lifestyle I had created for myself. So I became very unhappy because I wasn't making videos on what I genuinely wanted to do. I was growing with my beliefs, with my style of content I wanted to make. And this platform can really quickly become extremely censoring on what I'm allowed to share with you guys, what I'm allowed to talk to you about just because it's not what, you know, the majority of people like to hear. Um, it made me very depressed, okay? So that is why I've set up different revenue streams so I no longer am relying on this channel for my income and that is why now I am talking about things on my channel that I actually give a crap about that I can fully be myself now there's no censorship I'm sharing my actual opinions and my actual person I'm not just this commercialized in industry person that like the money and the influencer world turned me into like I can fully be myself and be raw with you guys right now. And that is why I'm talking more about God. So with that disclaimer out of the way, I had a couple comments on my previous God video that I made that I was, I guess, pushing my religion on some of my viewers. I just wanted to tell you, listen, <coughs> number one, I am not religious. I've always said this and I'm gonna dive into that in this video. But number two, you do not have to be here. Like, forewarning, I'm going to be talking about God. So if that's something you don't want, and that's fine. You, Not everyone loves God. You don't have to be here. But if you're curious about God, I would love for you to be here. And I'm grateful for your support throughout the years. But if you miss the old, more commercialized style of content, there's a million other influencers out there for you to follow that are just like that. So... Other than that, I wouldn't want to go ahead and dive right in. Religion versus relationship. There are so many people that believe that God is a religion. So when I talked about it on this channel, that was like one of the number one comments that I got was, that's your religion, that's your religion. And what I discovered was that there is a common misconception about God that if you have a relationship with God, the creator, that that automatically means you are identifying with some sort of religion, whether it be Christianity, Catholicism. I know Catholicism is like under Christianity. There's like all of these different denominations like Methodist, Orthodox, like it falls under all these titles. Religion, including Christianity, is an invention by people, not God. What religion really is, is people getting stuck where God used to be. Now, let me explain. Let's just say somewhere in history, an individual has a God encounter and they want to continue to have encounters with God. So whatever they were doing when they experienced that encounter, 
they continue to repeat it over and over, kind of like a ritual, right? So let's just give worship before church service as an example. And I am not hating on people that sing before church services at all. I love that part of church, but it had to come from somewhere though, right? So somewhere in history, there was a church service where they decided, hey, let's have someone sing before the service and God was there. It was amazing. They're like, let's do this every time. And so in order for people to try and replicate that God experience over and over, they create religion, if that makes sense. So that is why a lot of religions are very ritualistic and have repetitive practices because at one point God showed up when they were doing that thing. So it became a ritual, even if God is not even in it anymore. <laughs> and when I say God encounter, if you have never had a God encounter, it's when you feel the presence of God. No one can really explain it. It's kind of similar to when you listen to music and you get goosebumps, but like way more intense. So that is how religion Religions are formed and yes Christianity is a religion that believes in Jesus and God and everything but it's like going to church every Sunday listening to worship music listening to a sermon that's all very repetitive and that's religion like there are some services where I go and I do feel God's presence and then there's other times I go to church and I feel nothing I'm being honest it's because the Spirit of God is not religious so if you are still watching this video and you haven't clicked off then you might be asking yourself Natalia so you're telling me I could have a relationship with God and not go to church and not be a Christian. Yes. <laughs> yes, you 100% could. And in fact, that is how I believe I began my relationship with God. I was not a churchgoer. I did not have a history of growing up in a church or going to church. I did not even know anything about God or Jesus. I literally just had a God encounter one day and I felt like I needed to find out what this spirit was that I encountered. And I found out through Ironically, through seeking and meditation, like it led me to a church where I learned more about Jesus and I found out that the spirit that I had encountered was the God that Christians talk about, if that makes sense. So yes, to answer your question, yes, you can have a relationship with God and not go to church and not technically be a Christian. However, if you are living in the spirit, it will prompt you to actually do so to learn more about him. But anyways, I digress. We're going to get to that. But I wanted to talk about the law, AKA the 10 commandments, AKA the old covenant, which is what a lot of churches, I don't wanna use the word push, but they really put it out there like a rule book. I'm talking to the person that tried church and felt like they were being completely pounded in the head with a bunch of rules and a bunch of like regulations. And you wanted to completely run for the hills and be like, okay, no, I don't want anything to do with God. This is for you, okay? Because that was me. That was me. I did not like Christians, Christianity for a long time because I wanted nothing to do with the rules. It felt super strict and I didn't understand. I really hope I'm not the first person to tell you this, but there is nothing wrong with you feeling that way. There's something wrong with the church, okay? The Ten Commandments. I have to look them up. I don't even know them all. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not... Thou shalt keep the Sabbath holy. That's keeping Sunday as a holy day. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not have any gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Honor thy father and mother. Okay, I think that's all of them. That might have only been nine, but let me explain why the law or the old covenant is not how God wants his people to live. I know what I just said is a huge statement and a lot of Christians are going to get very upset. But before you leave me an angry comment, allow me to explain, yes, with scripture to back this up. I should probably start with scripture. Okay, I'm reading from Romans 7, 5 and 6. When we were controlled by our own nature, sinful desires were at work within us and the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law. Did you hear that? We've been released from the law. For we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way, new way, of living in the spirit. If that sounds super confusing to you and you don't really read the Bible that often, I'm just gonna break it down. Like this is super layman's terms. Here's what this means. Okay, the 10 commandments 
are kind of like a prison cell. All right, stick with me, please stick with me. Prison cells are designed for a purpose that is inherently good. So if there is someone that commits a crime, whatever crime, I'll let you fill in that blank, a prison cell is a good thing for you and for everyone else around you because you are led by the desire to be a criminal. If you are going around just feeling this overwhelming desire to commit crimes everywhere you go, you need something to contain you for your own good and for everyone else's good. So the cell is inherently good, right? However, if you are not a criminal, a prison cell is completely obsolete for you because you're not led to commit crimes. You already do what the prison cell would be doing for you naturally. That is exactly what the law is. It is holy and good inherently in its nature, but you have to know the context. Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments when the Jewish people needed rules. They were completely led by sin at that point in a completely different place in history. So they needed, they wanted rules, okay? They came from Egypt where they were always told rules and they were completely suppressed and they just wanted God to give them a rule book. They're like, God, we, we can't handle your spirit. We just need you to tell us what to do. And so that's exactly what God did. Just like a prison cell, when you put a criminal in a prison cell, a lot of times it actually has the opposite effect. Back in Moses's day, the Jews really struggled with keeping the Ten Commandments. They really couldn't keep them. Humans were never designed to keep them. It's exactly like when you put a criminal in a prison cell, Many times it doesn't reform them. It makes their desires even stronger. So that's why so many criminals reoffend and end up back in prison. Romans 7, 14 says this. So the trouble is not with the law for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me for I am all too human, a slave to sin. So yeah, even though the 10 commandments and those rules did technically come from God and they are good and holy, we don't need to follow them like a rule book in this day and age because now we have a new covenant that is even better than the old one, which is living by the spirit. I could make a whole different video on living by the spirit, but it's essentially having God's spirit within you. And this happens when you are reborn in Jesus and in the spirit. And it's when God is living inside you. So you naturally just fulfill the commandments without even thinking about it. Like we no longer have to try really hard to keep the Sabbath holy, because if you have the spirit in you and you have a relationship with the spirit in the new covenant, you naturally just have a desire to go to church for some reason. Like it just starts happening. Even though it's not a requirement, you have the desire, the genuine desire, if that makes sense. And maybe you've never experienced that before. Maybe you have never had a God encounter. You've never dealt with the Holy Spirit. And that is something you really want to do. I encourage you to say a prayer in your private time and maybe in a closet or a small space that's like private where you just open your heart and you just say, Jesus, God, I believe in you and I want to receive your Holy Spirit. And if you pray that and honestly mean it, God will show up and you'll understand the encounter and the spirit that I'm talking about. And stay tuned until the end of this video because you may have a God encounter in this video. I have some words that I'm going to list off that are very specific that might mean something to you. So stay tuned till the end. And maybe there are some of you watching that think, you know, I don't believe in God at all, actually. And I don't even believe in sin. I just do whatever I want. And I've been there before myself. And I will just say this, at that point in my life, I was very offended at the idea of God because I tried church, I tried the rules, and I didn't try God. I didn't try the relationship, I tried the religion. And because I was so offended at God, I didn't care about him, I didn't wanna pursue the idea at all. So I just like did whatever I wanted because that's what the majority of people I knew did. But I will say at that time in my life, because of that offense I was carrying towards the idea of God, I was was very depressed. I was very anxious. I was having bad dreams a lot. I was addicted to drugs. I hated my life. I hated myself. And deep, deep, deep down, I felt like there was a joy that I could still have in life. Like I felt like there was something more 
and I didn't know what it was. And I was searching for it everywhere. I was searching for it in drugs. I was searching for it in relationships, attention, in money. And I really was left high and dry on all of those. But if you can try and get past the offense that maybe someone hurt you in a church and just say like, you know, that wasn't God. Maybe I can give God a try. It will completely change your life. And I promise you that. So thank you. If, if that's you, thank you for even just listening and watching. Like if this isn't your thing and you're like, yeah, I still don't really Really care about God but I'm just here to support you Natalia like please just stick around I, I seriously appreciate that and I still love you I think that is equally as genuine and I appreciate it just as much but that is all for this video relationship versus religion I am going to dive into my words now if you have been around in these videos my word section at the end of the video is I go into prayer in the mornings God shows me random words or images and usually they are meant for for a person or multiple people watching this video right now. If anything I'm about to say resonates with you on a super personal level where you're like, whoa, how did she know that's for me? Then everything I said in this video was for you and maybe consider even rewatching it. <clears throat> the first word that I got was the number uh, 111. Maybe that is a special number to you. Maybe that is a date. It could be January 11th. I also kept getting this image. It's so weird and specific, okay, of this coyote howling at the moon. It looks like this. I'm going to put it on the screen. This image of, I, I don't know if it's a coyote or a wolf, and I felt the words lone wolf. If you have ever felt like a lone wolf in your life, or this image means anything to you, then this video is for you. Also a beautiful rainbow, and it wasn't like a half rainbow, but a full arching rainbow. Another image that I got was a super popular like image going around the internet right now. And it's funny that God would show me this while I'm praying, but there's an image or like a trend where people show what life looked like as a kid versus what life looks like as an adult. And like the kid one, life looks super colorful and bright and joyous. And then the adult one is super gray and gloomy. I felt like there were some people that were living like this. And I know the exact feeling that this trend is talking about. It's like, you remember being so happy as a kid, like everything in life made you excited and it was full of opportunity. And then as you got older, things just felt gloomier, like gray. If you resonate with that and that is how you feel like you're living through life, well, I am here to tell you that life is not supposed to feel like that as an adult. You are supposed to live with the exact same vibrancy and it, it should actually get brighter as you get older and as you continue. Like the best days are still ahead of us. So if you are not experiencing that, just know that is not how you should be living. And God wants you to know that walking with him is like your childhood life all the time. That one was kind of hard to explain and it's getting dark, I'm almost done. But finally, um, this is a trigger warning. Warning. So trigger warning, self-harm, but I felt like God really strongly was sharing that there's someone or one or multiple people watching this video that are struggling really hard with self-harm. And God wants you to know that it is by his love for you and his grace for you that you are still alive. Like you could have been dead. And I think me saying those words, you could have been dead. Someone's gonna know that it's them. So if you feel like I'm talking straight to your soul right now, like please don't question it because it is for you. You aren't dead because of God and he wants you to know that. And he is waiting for you to come back to him because he loves you so much and he wants to have that relationship with you in this lifetime. Whew. All right, that is all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will try to edit this video down as short as I can. My camera says 49 minutes, so if it's less than that, then that's very impressive. I love you guys so much and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here during this new chapter. And if you have any questions for me, if you have any topics that you would like me to touch on, I will definitely consider it. And I will try to answer a few questions down in the comments below. But that's all I've got. I love you and I thoroughly hope you enjoyed. But most of all, I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful day. God bless you guys. Bye.